Hi guys, uh, just a really quick reminder of a couple things before I turn you loose and you start researching your eco scenarios that you chose yesterday. Uh, like I said, just remind me of a couple things. So remember, we're, we've been spending our last week together going through the levels, making sure, and at this point, you should know what a population is, you should know what a community is. And that, that gives us enough of a background, and you've tried being an ecologist to actually start to study the our bigger level uh, in ecosystem. So just remember, I have this question here, the essential components really are going to vary from ecosystem to ecosystem, but you really need two main large ideas. You have to include an ecosystem member as our largest one that we've, we've heard of. It includes all the biotic, all the living uh, organisms and the living organisms parts and what they contribute, and then the non-living, the abiotic factor. So just keep that in mind because we're about to dive into that and we're going to spend a lot of time at this level. Um, so just uh, some things to think about to um, in terms of yourself. Remember, it's always easy, easiest if we pull it back to ourselves. Uh, we obviously live in an ecosystem, but think about where you live. What kind of an ecosystem? Like we're a part of that. So like how do we fit in? We're obviously biotic because we're alive, we're humans, but um, what do we do with the ecosystem? What does the ecosystem do with or for us? So that's something we're going to be looking at in the future, this idea of uh, like we actually rely on the ecosystem. So if you think about what are some things that you rely on it for? Um, obviously, you need food from the ecosystem. And keep in mind, a lot of our food doesn't even come from this ecosystem. It's shipped from somewhere else in the country. Um, but even within your ecosystem, if you were to go fishing, let's say, for example, you can take fish from an ecosystem here that we live in, and you can eat it. Uh, so so just keep in mind that um, some of the things we, we use that. And something we're going to see here, the, the term eventually we'll get to is this idea it's a fairly new idea. It's this idea of ecosystem services. Uh, and it's really the fact that like we rely on ecosystems. Um, a lot of people forget that, that ecosystems are super, super important because we rely on them. And not only for food, um, the, the air that you breathe uh, and even how we use them, even like um, for travel, um, for work, to harvest things like trees, to make homes. Um, we use ecosystems way more than we realize. So we're going to keep coming back to that term of, of ecosystem services. Right? Um, but before we can do that, we're going to go back. Remember yesterday, you guys had signed up for an eco scenario. Um, if you haven't done that, you want to make sure you do that. Um, and I want to give you today and, and actually tomorrow to spend time researching your eco scenarios. So this idea of an eco scenario, it's kind of funny, is actually not even a scientific term. Uh, it's a it's it's a made up word. Um, so it's 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 not only describing our ecosystem, but the story of the place. Think back to like the Grand Canyon has a story. Well, your ecosystem has a story as well. So we're going to start researching your eco scenario of choice, your ecosystem. And if we end up learning enough about it, we can then um, solve problems that arise. We, we can uh, figure out what's good and what's bad for our ecosystem. So you can ultimately be, if you know enough about it, the ultimate ecologist. So what I'm going to ask is that I want to give you guys today, I'm going to try to make this short and sweet, um, to find out about the populations that live there, the abiotic factors that live there, um, and researching that. So to uh, the important part, and the only reason we're doing this is not just to research, but uh, that we're going to keep each time we learn a new concept for the rest of the year, we're going to go back and dive back into your eco scenario, into your ecosystem and apply those topics. And eventually, like I said, you're going to know enough about it where you'll be able to problem solve and you'll deal with uh, any pressures and, and anything that goes wrong in your ecosystem. You'll know so much about it. You'll be able to come up with ways to, to solve that problem. So that's our, our main goal there. So in order for you to get this, the defining characteristics, that's what we're after, is, is it's a nerdy way for just saying, learn about your eco scenario. So there's two ways you're going to do that. Um, and they're both posted on through links on our Google Classroom. The first one is is here, is, is an option. Um, it's kind of a nice place to start uh, in our FOSWeb research book, uh, resource book rather, starting on page 16, it goes all the way to 30. I don't expect you to read that. In fact, um, you're just, if you choose to use that book, the link is there. 
um, your eco scenario will have like a little half page blurb where it'll tell you the big main ideas about your ecosystem. So I would actually start there. Um, you can read a little bit about it. They'll give you some um, information. Right? Your other way to do that is remember is in our eco uh, scenario um, introductions that we looked at yesterday. I want to go back and show you something with that. Uh, so remember that back in here, uh, I'm just going to choose randomly the Everglades. We can see where that is down here in Florida. So remember, if you visit your eco scenario, um, you can actually find out tons and tons and tons of information. It'll tell you all about an overview, where it is, how big it is, uh, about all the abiotic factors, biotic factors, remember living things. There's even at the bottom, they do all the legwork for you. This is great. They give you tons of links you can go to to find out more information. And probably my favorite part is um, eventually we're going to be building a food web. Um, but you can actually look at these organism cards here. It'll tell you about all the different living critters. A lot of them you're probably familiar with, like, oh, look, a raccoon. Uh, big deal, a garbage panda. Um, but then there are some weird things, like, what the heck is that thing? Uh kind of really, really odd. Like, what is that? Looks like a lobster. Um, it'll tell you all about the living things as well. Uh, so what I'm going to ask that you guys do is to, I'm going to turn you loose here, and your goal is going to be, uh, again, to, to research. I would recommend in a notebook, you might even make a column of uh, as we said, of biotic factors, of abiotic factors, um, and just generate a list of facts of information. What can you find out the big ideas about your ecosystem? And you're going to end with a, a simple exit ticket. I've kept this super, super short and sweet. Um, there's going to be a, a simple little Google Doc that you type into with three major questions. Like you're going to state, tell me about it. Where is it found? Describe it. Give me the most, three of the most and describe them abiotic factors. Um, like keep in mind some abiotic factors uh, like rainfall in a desert are gonna be a major issue, but in like a rainforest, uh, it's, it's gonna present itself in a different way. So some abiotic factors might not be important for some ecosystems, but they're huge for others. Um, and then tell me about three of the most important populations. Um, we're talking about living things there. So really simple. Um, I just want you to start your fact-finding mission. And this is very important, not just for an exit ticket. The research is huge for uh, later on. We're going to keep going back. I ultimately, bottom line, I want you to be an expert about your particular choice, your uh, eco scenario. Okay. So with that, I, uh, I'll let you go. and. Good luck.